We have traveled all over Kenya and East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need to improve their farms, get better yields, and become profitable farmers. We will see how farmers across the region can learn from experts and from each other in every way. Join us and our experts on this journey. And share their family's experiences as they make these changes. <coughs> Karibu to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Hello and welcome to Shamba Shape Up. Today we are in Koyugi location in Homa Bay County. And we are here to meet a farmer who needs our help, so let's go meet him. Shamba Shape Up have come to Homa Bay County, which because of its many bays is well known as a bay county. Here, fishing and farming are the main economic activities. In the village of Buru in Koyugi, we meet Mr. and Mrs. Langa and their family who live on this five-acre farm. Mr. Langa, how long have you been farming? From uh, 70s up to now. Up to now. Yeah. Do you enjoy it? Um, yeah, it, but uh, no, need uh, some technicians. They need oh. some te technicians to help. So you have to dig. What do you have in the shamba? Vegetable, uh -huh. maize, millet, rice, uh -huh. watermelon, and I have some seedling on uh, tomatoes uh -huh. or pili pili ho ho. Do you have cows? I have cows, hey. ten of them. Uh -huh. And I have goats, sheep, okay. and hens and, uh, for my, my wife. Ah. But a doctor, yes. how do you help the family in the shamba? I plough for them. Yes. I also help them in the time of weeding and harvest. Do you enjoy doing it? I enjoy doing it. So you'd love to be a farmer? Yes, I want to be a professional farmer. Professional farmer? <laughs> <laughs> then why do you call yourself doctor? I'm a doctor in specifically in watermelon yes. and uh, sukuma week. Ah, <laughs> well done. Good for you. Doctor, how do you like Shamba Shape Up to help you? I want uh, Shamba Shape Up to bring for me the experts that can help me to carry on with my farming and advise me more on how I can go on with it without any problem on my farm. As we have heard, the family have a mixed farm with a mixture of vegetable crops like spinach, skuma wiki, black nightshade, and animals like local chickens, cows, goats, and sheep. Like many farmers, their shamba has some problems. Their son, Doc, is very interested in farming and also looks after his uncle's farm while he's away. And that's where Shamba Shape Up with his team of experts comes in. Our changing climate is affecting many farmers who are now complaining of poor yields because of unpredictable rains. We have asked John Mukalama, an expert on soil, to help us understand what we can do to improve our farms as the weather changes. And how are the yields? Yields is so poor, we uh, can't do well mm. because of the drought and the sun pest. And then, uh, and if you can uh, plough a very nice land, you can't even get uh, enough food. So John, could you please explain to us what uh, climate smart means? If farmers can be able to embrace smart agriculture technologies like conservation agriculture, mm -hmm. crop rotation, uh, diversifying crops, and also trying to look at the ecosystem. How do we protect the resources that we have? The area, when I look at it, the way the farmer expl uh, explained to us is that in the 50s, this area was forested. And now, because of pressure of high population, they have already cut down the trees. So the tree cover is low. And when you look at the farms that are now becoming bare, most of it has encouraged soil erosion. One of the issues is that to put in place soil conservation measures. And they could do this by planting trees on hilltops. And also on the farms, they encourage them they should be able to plant the trees so that they can be able to use those trees to use it for soil fertility, use them for fuel wood, and also use them for fodder, for feeding the animals. But uh, there is a problem 
about uh, lucina. If you can plant uh, lucina here around the your samba, mm -hmm. the seeds is spread all the samba around. Mm -hmm. And even you can't even grow anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that true, John? Yeah, I you know when you if you don't manage well lucina, yes. it becomes a, a total weed. Uh -huh. But with good management, lucina will never be a weed. Because oh, it is uh -huh. fodder you are feeding to the animal. Right. You are cutting, coppicing. You know when you cut it, it comes up. So when it comes up, you will be able to leave it to grow up to a certain level, then you can use it for fodder. Farmers can go in for conservation agriculture, where they do just minimal tillage, but put in crop rotation and also add organic matter through mulching. And then we can be able to build up good soil fertility with time. The other aspect that we can focus on, we should not have this notation of just planting maize, maize, maize. We should go in for drought escaping crops like uh, cassava, to, uh, sweet potatoes, we have sorghum, finger millet, which could do quite well in this area. John has told us we need to look after the soil on the farm and hold it together by planting shrubs which we can also use to feed our cows. This means even if it doesn't rain, there will be food for the animals. And when it does rain, the soil does not get washed away. Pamela keeps a few local chickens, which she sells on a rainy day to earn a bit of money. But when the chickens are attacked by Newcastle disease and start dying, she tries to vaccinate them. But is that the right time to vaccinate? Dr. Were, a poultry expert, is here to advise us. Pamela, when was the last time you vaccinated? March last year. Uh -huh. What made you vaccinate your chickens? My chicken yes. was dying. Oh, they were dying. Uh, sorry about that. Mr. Were, Pamela had done some vaccination a while back after losing chickens. Yeah. But now uh, the chickens look okay, I hope so. Why do you think it's important for farmers to vaccinate their chickens? Yeah, it's very important for farmers to vaccinate their chickens because most of diseases that affect poultry or chicken are viral. And the most important way to, to, to prevent viral diseases is to vaccinate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, especially the, the, the most important disease to vaccinate from is the Newcastle disease. What is Newcastle disease? Yeah, Newcastle disease is a very important disease in poultry farming because uh, when it comes, it wipes out almost every disease. Newcastle disease is a viral disease that cannot be cured. The signs of Newcastle disease in chickens are swollen heads and necks, greenish diarrhea, sticky discharge in their eyes and nose, and wheezing noise when they breathe. To vaccinate, use a dropper to put one drop in each chicken's eye and wait for the bird to blink the vaccine into its eye. Vaccinate all your birds at least once every three months, starting at 14 days old. What are the common mistakes that farmers make when vaccinating their chickens? They vaccinate sick birds. Farmers should never vaccinate sick birds because the vaccine is a disease. So when you are vaccinated a challenged bird, you are causing more harm than good. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what do they do the sick birds? Once a farmer notices the sick bird, he or she should separate the bird from the healthy ones. Yes. Yeah. It's very important to vaccinate the chickens regularly to stop them dying. Use Avivax vaccine which is a new type of Newcastle vaccine and does not need to be kept cold all the way from the agrovet to your house. Now that Pamela's healthy chickens are all vaccinated, she shouldn't lose any more. We want to teach farmers about their soil and improve their yields by having their soil tested and getting them the best recommendations. To collect a good soil sample, you'll need a soil auger or panga. Insert the auger straight into the soil about 20 centimeters deep. Turn the auger several times to compact the soil. Then pull it out carefully. Place the soil in the sample bag. Repeat this process about 20 times in different area of your shamba in a zigzag pattern. And after two hours, we have the results. The soil pH is 5.8. That is very good for maize production. There's no need to do any amendments now. 
Soil fertility, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and micronutrients. He has only low nitrogen. Therefore, Joseph will have to use a CAN fertilizer at 2 kilograms on his farm. Then at top dressing again, he will use 34 kilograms of CAN on his farm. Continual use of compost will enhance good production. Now, if you are using CN, yeah. uh, we can't use uh, compost or compost we can put before we plant. Compost you always put before planting, uh -huh. just before planting, or you can use it during planting. So what do you recommend for them? Yeah, I recommend uh, the following crops as alternative crops for the farm. Vegetables, mm -hmm. that includes kales, cabbages, and even tomatoes, they are vegetables. Mm -hmm. Then grains, you love to plant things like maize, millet, finger millet on your farm. Then leguminous crops, for example, beans, soya beans, and uh, groundnuts on your farm. Uh, this year, yeah. uh, what is the measurement when you are sure. planting? Your farm needs 82 kilograms in one acre at planting. Then you'll need 34 kilograms of CN at top dressing. When the soil nitrogen is low, the plants are not able to grow well and the leaves turn yellow, making the plant weak so it can't produce enough yield. So, if you think your crops need an extra boost, it's well worth having your soil tested. Lots of work going on, Naomi. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Doc and Joseph are really shaping up. Oh, yes. They'll be truly shaped up. And there's more to come right after the break. Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up. We are still here in Buru Village. In Homa Bay County. Lots of work to do, so let's get on with it. We are still in Homa Bay County with the Langa family. We need to teach them how to feed their livestock better, especially in the dry season. Most farmers rely on napier grass to feed their livestock. Farms are becoming smaller and smaller, which means farmers now have to think of new ways to grow feed for their livestock, which don't take up as much room. Sylvia, an expert in Forda, is here to teach us how. But first, let us find out what livestock Joseph has. I have cows, 10 of them. I have goats. Yes. I have sheep. Mm. Uh, what do you feed them? Normal grass. And I have uh, napier grass. Mm -hmm. If they, it, there is a drought, I can just uh, cut them and oh. I just uh, give them to, to it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sylvia, you've heard from the farmer. Is there alternative feed that he can give his livestock? Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So he can use for the shrubs? Yes. So that he can uh, utilize the protein in the fodder shrubs to increase his milk production. What kind of fodder shrubs? We have uh, several types of fodder shrubs. We have uh, Kaliandra, we have Lucina, and we have Trichandra, and we also have Mulberry. He can grow a variety of those fodder shrubs and utilize during the dry season. Mm -hmm. yes. well, by looking around his farm, what kind of fodder shrubs can you identify? Actually, I can see he already has Lucina. Uh, though it is a bit of a groan, so harvesting this would be a, a big issue. Mostly we normally want for the shrubs to be managed at one meter so that uh, it is easy to harvest and feed the livestock. Uh, I have a question. We have a uh, different uh, uh, type of seeds. And you know some seeds are just spreading in the summer too much. Even you can't even grow anything. Like this lucina, you can't even put it around the samba. If you can put it around the samba, your samba will flood with the lucina. I don't know whether these seeds will just spread as, as a lucina. If it is like that, how can I grow my crops? What you are going to do, this one is spreading because of uh, management issues. You see, you've left it, it is overgrown. Mm -hmm. So when the seed turns, uh, starts turning brown, mm -hmm. then you harvest the seeds so that it does not disperse mm -hmm. all over in your farm. Mm -hmm. Lastly, what you can do when it spreads the, the seeds, you can pick actually pick those seeds mm -hmm. and put in the tubes. They are called wildlings. And then you set up a nursery. You can sell to other farmers and earn income from that. Yeah. Why should the farmer use for the shrubs? For the shrubs are a good source of protein. And uh, two, 
uh, having uh, using that as a protein, he will reduce on the amount he's using to purchase maybe dairy milk. They can also fix nitrogen in the soil and therefore he will uh, reduce the amount of money he's using to purchase fertilizer. Mm. And then uh, he can also use for firewood, for fuel wood. Advantages of fodder shrubs. Source of protein to livestock. They don't take a lot of space. Deep rooted and remain green even during the dry season. Some fodder shrubs fix nitrogen and therefore improve soil fertility. Can be used for firewood, forage for livestock, bees, poles, Soil erosion control, shade, windbreak. How do you plant them? There are two methods of planting. Mm -hmm. One, you can either do direct seeding, mm -hmm. but that one requires a lot when you have a lot of rainfall. Mm -hmm. You just do uh, 0 0.5 meters holes mm -hmm. uh, uh, from each other and then you plant the seeds. But it requires a lot of rain. But then you can also put them in the nursery. Uh, they germinate in the nursery mm -hmm. and then you will transplant later. If you plant this and you want to cut for the cow, how many, I, I, I can use a stage gun, how many meters or uh, centimeters? After you established, mm -hmm. you will cut at a, at a half a meter first, mm -hmm. then it will start sprouting. Mm -hmm. So after it sprouts, then you maintain the hedge at mm -hmm. one meter. Mm -hmm. Sylvia, I think right now you can demonstrate for us how to plant these fodder crops. To plant Kaliandra, dig a hole one foot deep and 50 centimeters apart. Remember to remove the seedlings from the polythene tubes before planting them. Make sure the seedlings have some soil attached to their roots. This will help them survive transplanting. Plant the seedlings upright in the holes and fix the space around the seedlings with a mixture of topsoil and manure. Compact the soil around the seedlings to make it stand firm. Water the seedlings every day to keep them alive. You will need about 500 shrubs to feed one cow for a year. A lot of farmers only use their phones to make calls, send SMSs and maybe to send money. But there are other ways that they can benefit using their mobile phones. And Martha, a young farmer from Homer Bay, who knows a lot about the internet, is going to explain and offer some advice. Well, a lot of farmers use their phones to get information. So, Joseph, what do you use your phone for? Mine, I used to get information from other people and other my friends. Mm -hmm. And then I can just call my families yeah. if there is something wrong. Uh, yeah. How about you, Doc? What do you use your phone for? Mine I used to call, calling people, mm -hmm. texting, mm -hmm. and uh, listening to music. Calling your girlfriend. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> okay, listening to music. <laughs> okay, so Martha here is a farmer, yeah, and she's here to tell us about the internet. Yeah, so Martha, what is internet? Internet is the world's largest interconnected group of computer networks. How can farmers access the internet? When you want to access the internet, you can go to a cyber cafe, that is especially when you are in town, or you can use your mobile phone, or you can also use your computer in case you have a modem to connect to the internet. Like for example, when you use your phone, you must have a smartphone to access the internet. Martha is talking about the internet. Mm -hmm. And that internet uh, told me that I can use a smartphone, a mm -hmm. computer. Yes. Now this smartphone and computer, how can I use them? That is not very difficult. Once you have your smartphone, it is easy to access the internet. You cannot use a kabambe to access the internet. Mm -hmm. After I got my smartphone, what next? First of all, to access the internet, you must have what we call internet bundles. Mm -hmm. So internet bundles, you can buy them through a scratch card. You just load your scratch card like airtime. Yes. So then mm -hmm. you buy bundles from airtime. Mm -hmm. Yes. Earlier you mentioned that you can access more information about the internet at the cyber cafe. But here we are very far from the big cities. So how can we get that more information when we are very far? Since you cannot access the internet cafe at the towns, so I will show you how to do it using your mobile phones. In addition to have an appropriate phone, 
you must have internet data bundles on your phone. Data bundles or MBS are similar to airtime. You can put them on your phone by buying a scratch card. Load the airtime by dialing star 544 star and the serial number. You get a message saying you have purchased data bundles. You can also buy bundles from your airtime by dialing star 544 hash. So what are the benefits of using the internet? First of all, a farmer can easily access or make contact with other farmers. Mm -hmm. Another benefit is that a farmer can also access information from the agrovets, from agronomists or from veterinarians. Yes. A farmer can also visit different sites like Google, mm -hmm. uh, Facebook or WhatsApp. When a farmer sites, yeah. access Google, mm -hmm. he can ask simple questions, then he, he'll get answers. Can this also help in marketing? Yes, this can also help in marketing, but marketing, a farmer can use Facebook or WhatsApp simply by taking a photo of the product mm -hmm. that he has and sending it to the buyer. Mm -hmm. So then the buyer will tell the farmer yes. whether he can take the product at what cost. So I will show you using my smartphone how you can access the internet. However, if you cannot access the internet through your smartphone, when you go to the cyber cafe, you'll find people who can help you access the internet. To access the internet on your phone, you must first make sure that your phone is internet enabled. You need to have internet bundles, either by loading them from a scratch card or buying them from your airtime or M-Pesa account. You can go to Google, which is a search engine. You can enter a word or a question and the site will link you to relevant information. You must create an account before you can use Facebook. Once you have an account, you can also follow the Shamba Shepherd page and learn about upcoming shows and receive useful information. When you use your phone to connect to the internet, it drains your phone battery faster. You need to be able to charge your phone. That's why we have invited a solar light expert to see how he can help. And while he does that, he can also improve your lighting system. Kevin, I do believe you have a solution to their problems. Yes, indeed. I have a solution to their lighting problems. I have a D-Light home system. The D-Light home system has a portable lamp. You can walk around, check on your, uh, your cows. Okay, apart from the portable lamp, it has two other bulbs which comes with the switches. So you are able to uh, use them in the two rooms that you have. What was wrong with your old solar system? It was uh, so bad mm. and I can't stay even for one hour. Uh. Uh, that's why I want to know how about this. You can stay for how many hours? And if it is like that, ah, we can just stay with that. this Nyangile. <laughs> <laughs> If it will keep going off hey, after one hour, hey, after you one hour. stay with Yangi. It is okay, you can just go and buy, buy oh, paraffin, <laughs> paraffin, and then we can continue with our, our life. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Kevin, you've heard from the farmers. What are the advantages of this, this system? Uh, one advantage with this is that uh, our lamp has two settings. The first setting goes for uh, seven hours, which is a low light. Then there's a second setting that goes for four hours. Mama, where do you charge your phone? I charge my phone in Yangweso. Yangweso? Mm. Is it far from here? Mm. Mm. Uh, do they charge you or is it free? Ah. Uh, you pay? I pay. How much? 20 silly. Hey, by charging? Mm. It has a charger, so you are able to be on phone throughout. You don't have to walk all the way to Yangweso to charge your phone, right? The D-Light D20 solar home system is a personal power grid for your home. It includes a solar panel, a battery pack which runs two hanging solar lights, two light switches, and a portable lantern. The battery also charges your phone. Installing it, it's very easy. First, nail the solar panel on the roof. Then, connect its wires to the battery and screw the battery onto the wall. Run the lighting wires to where you want the lights to hang and screw the switches onto the wall.
So now that you're leaving, where are you going to be getting information about farming? I will get my information from my neighbors and friends. Mr. Langa, where are you going to get your information from? Uh, I will get from my neighbors and my brothers and my sisters from far corners of Kenya. All of them? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, do you have your phones with you? Yes, I have. Good. Take them out. Mm -hmm. Then go to messages. Shamba Shape Up has a service to help you, so you don't have to remember everything. It is called the iShamba, and it can send you information to help you know what to do on your farm and when to plant. You can even call and talk to an expert if you get really stuck. Just send an SMS with the word JOIN to 21606. And you can shape yourself up anytime and anywhere. It's a good thing. Eh? We are very proud of it. It has been a wonderful shape up and we must be off to our next farm. Shamba Shape Up is online. To learn more about today's topics or to watch any of our previous episodes, visit shambashapeup.com, select the episode and click play. You could also visit our Facebook page, Shamba Shape Up, to get more information, get involved in discussions and also get a chance to enter some of our great competition to win great prizes. You can also find us on Twitter at Shamba Shape Up.